Hi, this is Chris from knowyourewm.com and after more or less showing you what coding looks like with some examples in between, we thought it would be a good time to debug something together so you know how the different fields, objects, structures and tables are filled and operated during the execution of an ABAP program. So, let us have a look! Now, we thought it would be a good idea to go with the same report we had a look at when looking at, at some coding examples. This time, we, we are going to have a look at the job or the report for deleting telegrams in the EWM system. So, as input variables, we are going to go with our warehouse number and we are going to go with our PLC, in this case, the 06. We are going with a residence time of one day and the commit counter, we are going to leave it at that. And now we are going to go for the slash h and we execute the program. Now, don't be confused, this is the old debugger we see right here. But, of course, we can change this one and switch to the new debugger as most people will use it. So, let us switch. Now, we see the new debugger. On the left side, we see the coding we are going to run through. And now, by pressuring F5, we are going to go to the next statement. We see a refresh statement. As we learned, this means initializing a table. In this case, the table already has zero entries, but nevertheless, this is good coding. Good coding meaning we do not want anything bad to happen and in that case we are going to initialize it before we are going to fill it. So we initialized the table. Next up we see a call function statement. If we would pressure F5 right now we would jump into this function module. But for now we are going to we are not going to do that and we want to jump to the next statement after the call function. That can be done with the F6 button. Now this function determines for our warehouse number, warehouse number variable we see right here, which is our input field with 150, we determined this structure, the ls underscore t300. And if we double click on it, we see that we determined the warehouse number from the function module. Now back to the coding. Next up we see an if statement. The sub RC always tells us if the operation up front did successful or not. In this case the sub RC which we also see above here is zero. This means the selection or the function module worked properly as we also received a returning or an importing value. Now let us go on. Now we have an authority check statement. This is done that not every user with too little knowledge or something like that could operate this report right here. Let us go with the F5 and again the sub RC is zero. Basically we are allowed to operate this. Therefore we are not going to go inside the if statement where a message error would appear. By pressuring F5 we jump to the next statement. This statement is basically a copy meaning the line or the structure which we received from the 
function module up front is appended to the table IT300. Right now, this table has zero entries as we see right here. If we pressure F5, we see that we now got one entry, the entry from the structure. This structure is appended, so basically we add a new line. If the current lines are zero, basically the lines afterwards is one of course, and the entries are the same from the structure. Next up, we have a get timestamp field operation. This means we want the current time the system has right now. If we go for F5, we can see that this is the timestamp. Basically, the first four are the year, the month and the day. And afterwards, we see basically the time we got right now. These write statements we see right here are basically just for writing messages on the screen that is not that important for our case right now. Now we see a loop statement. As you remember, when looping over a table, we want to go through all entries we want to go through. In this case, as we see no where clause, this means the system will loop over every entry in the table. As you remember, this table only has one entry. So basically, this is like a read table statement, but for all entries. Since we got only one, it wouldn't make a much of a difference. So now we are in the loop. In this loop statement, we are going to go for another function module. In this case, we are reading the time zone for a warehouse number. As you remember, our warehouse number was the 150 and by going for F6, because we do not want to jump inside that function module, we are going to receive the time zone. In this case, the Central European time. Again, the sub RC is zero, as we see right here, so no need for a message to appear. Now this message, or basically not the message, <coughs> but the variable for the time zone and the current timestamp are converted. So we got an actual date and we get a time. Then the system does that again, converting, and now we see some interesting statement. Now we get a select statement. As you remember, we already had a look at this when just looking at the coding right now, we are debugging it. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and of course, give us a thumbs up if you like our episodes. Now, let us have a look at that select statement. This select is, is supposed to select the PLC, the channel and the timestamp from the database. Database is basically we want to select it from this table. The entries we are going to find are to be stored in this local table. And what entries do we want to select? We want to select the entries for our warehouse number, as you remember the 150. For the PLCs we did enter, in this case we, got, we are going to go with a 06. What we see right here, by the way, is a select option statement. As you remember, the starting point of the program, we could enter intervals and more than one value. This is called a select option. And it reads like this. The sign is, do we want to include or exclude the variables we, are go we, are we put in. In this case, of course, we want to include them because we want to see 
all for the 06 PLC. And the option tells us how we want this specific PLC to be selected from the database. EQ for equals. Other values could for example be not equals or lower as or lower equals. Just some examples. Now back to the select statement. Let us clear the table right here and let us have a look what this select brings us. We go for F5 again and we see the sub RC is zero again and we selected 51,000 and then some entries from the database. If we have a look at what we did select, we see the different rows of the table, we see the PLC, of course every entry has 0, 06 since we entered this in the beginning of the program. We got different channels of course from the database and a timestamp of when this entry was written to the database. Now for one episode we think that is enough. We hope you enjoyed this new episode and you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also visit us on our homepage knowyourewm.com for our SAP EWM training courses. Have a great day and see you in the next episode.